I've been wanting to do a message uh, for some time now, a, a broadcast teaching uh, folks how to pray, because I see that very few truly understand what prayer is or how to pray. And this was a question that the disciples asked Jesus. So this is not something that uh, is isolated. Uh, in Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Can you think of a greater request? Could there have ever been a greater request? Lord, teach us. Teach us to pray. Luke eleven twelve uh, t- verse 2, And he said unto them, When you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then in another place it goes on to say, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, it has been said that this was the model prayer. Sadly, very few today understand what Jesus was really saying. This was not a model prayer. Jesus said to the disciples, When you pray, pray. This prayer. See, we're living in an hour when there are many voices and many things going on today where people think that God hears their self-centered prayers. No. True prayer is praying according to the will of God. Jesus was telling the disciples, Agree. With my will. See, the ultimate is that God is going to send his kingdom upon this earth. That is the ultimate. But in order to be a part of this kingdom, you must forgive. And you must receive forgiveness. You can't be in his kingdom without forgiveness. And you can't be in his kingdom if you don't forgive others. You must be forgiven and you must forgive. But Jesus didn't stop there. Jesus said he realized that they would need daily bread to live on this earth. So he added that as part of the prayer. But he's not talking about just daily bread and the physical bread. Jesus is also talking about spiritual bread. Everything that Jesus mentions in this prayer is everything we need and nothing more. People understand what Jesus was saying when he said to the disciples, When you pray, say, Our Father. The focus of our prayer is always to the Father. Amen? Through the Son. Our Father. Notice... Jesus didn't say, my father. When we go to our father, we don't say, my father. I know a lot of times when I pray, I say, our loving father. Now that's a prayer, or that's something the Spirit, the Lord, the Holy Spirit put in my spirit. Not so much just for me, so that I understand it's more about others as it is about me. But those that hear me pray will hear and be taught how to pray. Our loving Father. It's not just my Father. He's our Father. 
Amen. So when I pray, I say, Our loving Father. That's how I begin my prayer. That is something the Holy Spirit put in my spirit. Our loving Father. But Jesus helped them to understand that your focus in prayer must be to the Father. And you must remember that He is holy. Hallowed be thy name. He's holy. You don't go to the Father and just talk to Him like you do a person. Today they're trying to say the Father is just Daddy. No, that's not Scripture, people. That's deception. You don't bring God down onto your level. We need to go up to His level. He is God. He is a spirit. He is hallowed. He's holy, people. When you pray, have reverence. Humble yourself and reverence Him. He's he's hallowed. He's holy. Now this was the emphasis of Jesus' prayer or that He was teaching the disciples. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Folks, understand, while all the world of Christianity today, or churchianity and Christianity, and believers alike, are praying their own prayers, their own wills, there is a handful, there is a few, there are those that are praying according to the will and the mind of God. When you get down to pray, I find myself more and more when I really get down to pray. These are the words that start coming out of my mouth. Really, folks, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. The words that come out of my mouth as I'm in the Spirit, Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done. Amen. More and more, I find this, what we call the model prayer, taking over my prayer life. Because it's more than a prayer. It is the will of God. This is the word of God. This is the will of God. This is the purpose of God. This is the whole plan of God that Jesus gave to the disciples. Pray. When you say these things, you're praying. Amen. When you say these things, you're praying. You're really praying. Because you're praying according to the will of God. Now, I'm not saying you pray this prayer or say these things just to say them, just because Jesus said to say them. I'm saying that the Holy Spirit, you'll find that the Holy Spirit will begin saying these words through you. The Holy Spirit will begin praying this prayer through you. Folks, There should be a yearning. There should be a longing. There should be a groaning within us. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. Is there a cry in your spirit? Is there a call? Is there a a longing in your spirit? God, your kingdom come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Is there a cry in your spirit for his kingdom to be set up? Old things to be passed away. I mean, a new heaven, a new earth. I mean, the old to be passed away. Are you tired of all the foolishness today? All the foolery, all the fakery, all the lies and the deception and and all the drama and everything that's going on today to to elect a, a president of the United States is ridiculous. It's a joke. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to set up His kingdom on this earth. His kingdom's coming, people. That ought to make you rejoice. From this point on, let your prayer be, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In, as in heaven, so in the earth. Let this become the cry of your spirit, of your heart, glory to God. Give us this day our daily bread. Us, not me, not 
just me, but us. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our sins. Not me, just me, but us. For we, notice, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Notice Jesus is causing this to become a collective. It's not just about me. It's not self-centered. Let this become the cry of your spirit, folks. It's not just about me. Don't you want to see some other folks go with you into the kingdom? Don't you, wouldn't you like to see some other people to be in the kingdom? Your whole spirit, your whole heart, your cry of your heart should be that you want to bring others with you into his glorious kingdom. To live forever. Amen. I'm already living in his kingdom. His kingdom doesn't come in observation. His kingdom's within us. I'm already walking in the kingdom. Already in the kingdom. On this earth. Walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. But I want some other folks. Amen. People around me. Even those that are in the church that are lukewarm. I want them to come out of their lukewarmness. And walk in the spirit. And walk in the kingdom. And enjoy the kingdom. The kingdom's not meat and drink. It's joy, it's peace, it's righteousness in the Holy Ghost. This should be the cry of every single one of us today, the cry of our spirit, our heart. Our cry should be, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in heaven as in earth. See, real prayer, true prayer, is agreeing with the will of God. Agreeing with the word of God. That's real prayer. Don't get down to pray and just pray your own prayer. Let the Holy Ghost pray through you. Let the Holy Ghost show you what to pray. Let the Holy Ghost lead and guide you. Friends, I want you to know, the closer I get to the Lord, the closer we get to the end, the cry of my spirit has been, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. The Holy Spirit will have you praying according to the will of God. Hallelujah. Notice that Jesus deals with debt. He deals with forgiveness. Very important. Folks, understand it is vital, vital that we understand we must forgive every single person that's ever indebted to us. And then we must accept their forgiveness. Listen, it's all about forgiveness. That's what Jesus Christ went to the cross for. That we could forgive. That we could be forgiven. So we could be free. There won't be anybody in His kingdom that has unforgiveness in their heart. There won't be anybody in His kingdom that has... uh, some kind of resentment in their heart, looking to uh, bring vengeance on somebody. No, it's got to be forgiveness. And that's why we see Jesus on the cross saying, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. And then we see Stephen, as he's being stoned, lay not this sin to their charge. Hallelujah! We have been forgiven, so we must forgive those that are in debt to us. Amen? You're not going to heaven if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, friend. Stop believing that lie. Stop believing you're going to heaven if you've got bitterness and resentment in your heart. You must forgive. Must! Jesus said, if you don't forgive, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. Don't think that God the Father in some uh, way is on your side, but not He doesn't desire to forgive your enemies. No, the Lord is willing that none should perish. Jesus went to Calvary. Jesus went to the cross so that all might be saved. He's willing that none should perish. Jesus loves every single person on this planet as much as He loves you or anybody else. He's no respecter of persons. The difference is they reject His love. They reject His forgiveness. They reject the truth. They reject His Lordship. They reject Him being King. That's the difference. It's not that Jesus doesn't love them as much as He loves you and I. So the cry of your heart, if you don't know what to pray. Now there's people today that think, well, I'll just pray. I'll just try to pray a prayer that, well, I'll just pray a prayer. Well, Lord, uh, thank you for this day and um, Lord, um, you know, 
you know, I need these things, Jesus. I, I need this, that, and the other. And No. Jesus said, when you pray, say. When you pray, say. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus is telling them, say this when you pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. I have found, as I am more and more living in the Spirit, praying this prayer, I don't have to worry about any of my needs. I don't have to be concerned if the bills are going to get paid. I don't have to be concerned if I'm going to eat some food or if I'm going to have food or if I'm going to have a roof over my head. No, I'm praying according to the will of God. I'm Now, as I pray this word of God, believing it, because this word will put faith in your spirit and you'll have faith. And when you pray this in faith, you don't have any worries. Amen? You don't worry about anything. Why? Because he's your father. He's your provider. You're in a kingdom. There is no lack in his kingdom. Did you know there's never a lack in God's kingdom? God's kingdom is never lacking. So if you're lacking anything in your life, it's because you're not believing God to supply what you need. Seek first the kingdom of God in His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you, friend. That is the truth. That's not just a cliche. That is divine truth. Seek first the kingdom of God in His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. That's the truth of God's holy word. And it works. I remember my pastor said one time, and it really struck my spirit. He said, faith works. Amen. Faith without works is dead, but faith works. It works, friend. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I know in my spirit that I've got to teach this generation how to pray. I've got to teach this generation what to say when they get on their knees because they don't know what to say. They're they're told that if I just ask God and, and believe, try to believe God for Him to meet. No, that's not what prayer is, friend. Prayer is agreeing with what's already been said. Prayer is agreeing with God, agreeing with His Word. Hallelujah. Praise God. You'll never experience more power in your life than when you get on your knees and you worship God in spirit and truth and His Word begins like a river flowing out of your belly. Hallelujah. Folks, listen. The river flows out of the throne of God in the book of Revelation. We see the river flowing out of the throne. Well, if the kingdom's within us, then the throne is within us. And out of the throne, out of our belly, flows rivers of living water. What is that rivers of living water? It's the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. It's the kingdom of God flowing out of us, hallelujah. The kingdom's within us. The kingdom of God is It's not meat and drink. It's joy. It's peace. It's righteousness in the Holy Ghost, people. To the measure you're experiencing joy, to the measure you're experiencing peace, to the measure you're experiencing the righteousness of God is to the measure you're walking in His kingdom. Hallelujah. This is divine truth I'm sharing with you. Not trying to sound right. Not trying to be eloquent. Not trying to uh, say just the right words. Trying to get a message across to you. Because there's all the hell is trying to keep this message from people. The kingdom of God is joy. How much joy do you have in your life, friend? The kingdom of God is peace. Not when you're, everything's going fine. Not when uh, That's not peace. Uh, when, when everything in your life seems to be... No, that's not peace. Peace is when everything's not going right. And you still 
have peace in your heart. You don't get all upset. You don't get troubled. Amen? Because you got His peace inside of you. But then that peace that's inside of you can flow out and affect even outside of you. And God can give, give you peace even with your enemies. A man's ways please the Lord. He'll make even his enemies dwell at peace with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven. Amen? He's in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. He's holy. Thy kingdom come. Is that the cry of your heart, friend? Thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. Thy will be done. Your will, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. As in heaven, the way it is in heaven, so in the earth, Lord. Let there be on the earth, heaven on earth. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. No more sin. No more wickedness. Amen. No more evil. No more uncleanness. Amen. Praise God. No more devil. No more temptations. Notice what Jesus said in this prayer. Lead us not into temptation. Did you know you don't have to be tempted? People today, they believe that temptation is God's test for his people. It's not. Every man is tempted when he is led away of his own lust and enticed. Jesus said, pray that you not be entered into temptation. The Lord doesn't want you and I being tempted by the devil. That only happens because there's something in us that can be tempted. The Lord doesn't tempt, nor can he be tempted. Amen? Temptation comes from the devil. He's the tempter. So Jesus says, when you pray, pray, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I love the way that this prayer, all this prayer has, has words that have to do with more than just me. Amen. We see our, we, us. These are the words Jesus used when he said, when you pray. Next time you get down to pray, friend, don't use words like me. I, only me, amen, deliver us from evil, Lord, deliver us, let that be the cry of your heart, deliver us, your people, all your people, all your children, and even those that are not saved, deliver us, let that be the cry of your heart, hallelujah, praise God. Let your prayer become intercession. Be an interceder. Intercession. Praise God. Us. We. Our. Hallelujah. Now maybe you could have preached this message better than that. Maybe you could find someone to preach it better. I'm just obeying the Lord. Sharing what He put on my heart. And I pray that somebody out there got this message I hope that God could use this to touch your heart help you understand what prayer really is hallelujah the power of prayer of true prayer is agreeing with God praying the same words that Jesus said God bless you